I am here with Anita. Uh, she is from California. Uh, oh, excuse me. Say I'm Philly. I lived in California 20 years. Okay, lived in California, but from Philadelphia. Uh, so talk to me. We're out here. Uh, there's Trump people. There's uh, Harris people. There's people disgusted with both. You're somewhere in the middle, I guess. Well, the thing is, look, the economy hasn't been good. You know, a lot of people, Americans, are suffering. Now, I'm a senior citizen, whether I look at it or not, I'm 67, and I don't work as much. And so I'm expecting that my life gets easier, but it's getting harder. I have to work now. And, you know, at this age, you know, sometimes you're tired. Not that I'm really tired, I'm a yoga teacher, but get, you know what I'm saying. But the thing is, yeah, I expect that, that, we, that the economy should work along with the seniors. And that hasn't been happening. So seniors have to go out of their way and start to pick up a new life, hitting 70. Is that because grocery prices, yes, gas, gas prices, prices. rents? Right. And I'm still traveling around, driving places all the time. Just came back from New York. I'm driving. Gas is high. So, you know, uh, I thought that things would get easier when I became a senior citizen. But it hasn't. And these past four years ha are a good example that nothing is, is right. The gas, the economy, the... Um, I'm very afraid living in the United States right now with the borders, the open borders. Now, living in Los Angeles 20 years, which I pay real estate tax there, I do own a condo there and Kamala is my neighbor there believe it or not because it's Brentwood that's where the whole OJ Simpson thing happened and Kamala and her husband have a home there and her office is there even though she's from San Fran they live there when they're not in DC but the thing is I see the open border I've learned about that very much living in California because you know it's so easy to cross the border there Mexico's right there at San Diego my neighborhood in Los Angeles is, is has a total disaster and it's Brentwood one of the high-end elite neighborhoods there are it, it is like I, I after the election I'm gonna sell because whoever gets in depending on who gets in because a disaster in terms of terms homeless of the, homelessness the, the neighborhood is no longer considered the upscale neighborhood because of the tents and the home, the immigrants, the border needs to get under control. I'm afraid living here in the United States with this border out of control. The Venezuelans. But in California, that's not as much the immigrants as just mass homelessness. I mean, California is one of the like ground zero for homelessness. Right. That's not undocumented immigrants. Right. That's home people who have been priced out of living. Right, right. that's true. California's gotten very expensive. You're right. It is the most ex one of the most expensive states. Tax-wise is New Jersey has the most high real estate. So, and I'm from Jersey, Philly, and California. So, the thing is, um, what, what I want to say is, is that when we get the border under control, and there are a lot of immigrants coming across the border all over, you know, Texas, everywhere. New York is very, very out of control with the border. The Venezuelans attacking uh, apartment buildings, you know, break, going right into people's homes. This is this is the first the first step. No, this is communism. We are go, moving toward communism. And I really feel that the Democratic Party, nothing against them, but they're puppets for whoever's running the show. And who's running the show? Obama, Pelosi, Hillary. They're running the, the they're pulling the strings. Okay? And we are, they are, she's a puppet. That's why they put her in, Kamala. But you think it's communism because we have an influx of immigrants? Have, no, they want to have a one world government. And they're working toward that. And the United States is not that, but it's they're trying to be make it that one world See, government. I agree with you, but disagree with you. I don't think it's those politicians running the government. I think it's their donors, donors oh. of both sides. Yes, the donors. Trump's taking money from billionaires, billionaires. He made his his secretary of state the sec the Exxon Mobil CEO, and Kamala's taking all this money from right. billionaires so and millionaires, they both, and they both expect a return on investment. But here's what I'm looking at. You don't, think, you don't think Trump is just as purchased? I, I think. Listen, all politicians are not to be trusted, okay? But I'm going from experience. Trump was in office four years, gas was low, we didn't have inflation, and we didn't have a war. So I'm looking at that, and I felt safe in America. I do not feel safe. I have to, I feel like I have to really lock my windows up at night, because when I go around the neighborhoods, I see the immigrants all over now, and they're busting neighborhoods up. But in, fa but, wait, wait, wait. in, fa but in fairness, there was a worldwide pandemic that, frankly, Trump well, badly that missed. That? One second. Well, the prices started skyrocketing. Trump's the, the prices started skyrocketing his last year. 
inflation started skyrocketing because of the supply chain and all that. Okay. So it's, Biden hasn't made it better. I don't think Harris has any well, solutions you, to make it. But you're making it. you're making it you're making it seem like the prices are only because of the Democrats when no. it started under Trump. First of all, this this interview is a conversation, yeah. not an argument, and it's not about blaming. They're all wrong. Biden took down the wall. He could have kept that wall going where Trump started. Usually what you're supposed to do, regardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat, is to help each other, support each other, and pick up where one left off. Trump was putting the action into controlling the border. They did not continue that. There was a lot of tit for tat and little inner childs jumping up saying, huh, put, let me spit on you and I'll spit on you and you spit on me. And that's what's going on. Psycho I'm a psychotherapist. OK, that is what's going on psychologically. I'm not blaming Democrats, but they've had four years. The border when Trump was in, I all I'm saying is I don't care what they all do behind the scenes. When he was in office, gas was cheap. My clothes are big because I can't eat my snacks anymore, okay? I have to, for the $2 cookies are $8 now, okay? Inflation is high. And not everyone is going to see it as a senior, and the young kids might not see it, but the middle of the road people will because they have children, they're raising, and that way. But I have to look at who did a job when they were in office. They're all, if you wanted to say they're all crooks and they're all liars and stealers. And that is the job and the life of being in politics. That's unfortunate. Uh, I, I want to, one, one more thing. Let's say Trump gets in, the border is shut completely. Well, it's never going to be shut. No, no, no. But from what, you, from what you're saying, you want tight. You control. Right, right, control. Let's say he achieves that. What is he proposing that's going to get these prices down? It's well, it's fine. It's fine to it's well, fine to acknowledge it. But in his mind, uh, he talks a lot about fracking and energy. So being to everything has to be done at a bigger picture. You see, people think that like everything that's going on in the world is a symptom, like the gun shootings in the schools that are happening, happening like once a month. You know, it's like a regular lifestyle now. Once a week now. Yeah, right. OK, that is a symptom from the bigger picture. It's called transference in psychology. When you fix the bigger picture at the top, which could be energy you start with, naturally inflation and gas and border and all that one by one, they come down. And then what happens in societies and communities all around the country? you see less of that. You're never going to get away from gun shooting, et cetera, et cetera, but you will see less of it because the world is in one big insurrection. But how is drilling, 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 and then sending that oil and exporting it to other countries, how is that lowering the price of groceries? How is that lowering the price of rent? Well, how is that lowering figures, the price? It all figures in with the money. I don't know about the math so well, but when you do fracking, fracking is the first energy. Okay, he talks about that. I'm not, you know, that brilliant to know about I've it. Covered the pipelines. They're fracking, 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 which is very dangerous. And then they're selling the oil to other countries. It's not actually being used for American so, energy. So either party, either party, the Dem or the Repub, are not going to do exactly what we all want. Mm -hmm. But as an everyday person, I don't care about politics. I don't care what they do behind closed doors. Right now, I want to see low gas. I want to see a controlled border. I want to see inflation go down. I want to be able to go get my nails done. I want to be able to buy my cookies. But you don't know how Trump's going to do that, I'm getting. You just, you just think he will. No, I, I, you're, now you're calling him a liar as, as the fake news. How, how is he? He's not proposing he how. He did that. He already did that when he was in office. Right, but the prices started going up in 2020 during COVID. He was still the president. Well, they didn't go up 20. They start going up after 21. Mm, I mean, I, I, like major, after 21. Gas prices, late 2020, right, early 2021. It's yeah. not, you can't blame everything on COVID because we had COVID. Now we have to have high prices on everything to pay back. Well, half of this is uh, companies price gouging. A lot of this is companies price gouging. I haven't heard anything from either of them. Well, Kamala, Kamala says she's going to stop price gouging at groceries. How? We'll tell you later. Trump, well, you know Trump says that's communism. All I know is, is that I haven't seen anything from Kamala. We saw what Biden did, and it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. I don't care about when they talk about the lie. Well, look what Trump left us. They've been in power for the last 12 years, the Clintons, the Obamas, and and the, the, the Biden-Harris. They've been in power for 12 years and they're still blaming Trump. <laughs> Hello, they're still blaming Trump for the 12 years that they have been in power. 
This all started when Bill Clinton got in. Okay, that's when the Democratic Party went too left. They were hijacked. That's why. The, yeah, yeah. And that's well, I why. Think it's the, I think they've gone too right, the Democratic no, Party. No, the Democratic Party is the real Democrats. The ones that are not real left are moving more toward the right to the Republicans, as Dershowitz, Dersh, Alan Dershowitz just did. Uh, John F. Kent, uh, what's his name? Kennedy. RFK. Kennedy just did. Why are they doing this? Because they're not. And even Shapiro. If Shapiro got in here in Philly, he's a Democrat. He's a normal Democrat. He's not. I'm California Philly. I know her liberalness because I lived LA 20 years. I pay real estate tax there. And I know that type of person that she is. And that type of person that the Californian is, if you're raised there, which I pretty much 20 years of my life. But, and, and I have had property there. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, is that a lot of the Democrats don't like the far too left. They don't like the far too right. So they're going to try to go somewhere in the middle. But I think a lot of Democrats are unhappy both ways. And I think a lot of Democrats are unhappy with too far left because they're not there. So what the Democrat Party is trying to do, the far left, they want to, you know, appeal to the young people coming up. You know, the transgenders, the LGBT. There's nothing wrong with that. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. All of these things. But, you know, you know, with the, the girls in sports in school, that's taking women's rights right there. When you have boys on a team that are trans, on a team with girls, and girls by. I'm one team. I'm a swimmer. I'm a professional swimmer. If there's going to be a guy, I'm not going to win. I don't care if he's got a. But what I don't know, what I don't know, what I don't understand about that, of all the problems in America, why is Trump and Republicans focusing on this so much? We're this not is focused. not a big problem in America. No. Why are they focusing on abortion? Because that's taking women's rights. No, what's taking women's rights is putting men on a woman's sport team. You that's don't think it's taking women's rights to make medical decisions for them? The the court overruling Roe v. Wade. That's a different thing, but they're using that whole abortion to get a vote. That is, if you're going to vote for somebody just for that, hello. I'm not going to vote just for that, okay? I mean, there's many other factors. I mean, if that's your main thing, I was talking to a young guy the other day. Oh, I'm going to vote because uh, the girls can't have abortion. I'm like, how many girls did you force to have an abortion? You know, it's like a guy thing too, okay? It really is. What do you think about uh, Trump's talking about jailing his uh, anyone who cheated? Uh, during the election, he cl he's already claiming people are cheating. Uh, he's saying about pardoning people who were arrested for uh, storming the Capitol. Uh, well, the a lot of people that went uh, to the Capitol are being held hostage. Really? Yeah, they're being held hostage because I went to J6, and I could tell you everything firsthand. So could he? He was my cameraman. Yeah. He was there. Yeah, tell me, tell me, what, why are they hostage? The doors were open. Antifa started. I don't want to get into it. Were all the doors open? You were there. The doors no, were right? Open. Yes, they. No, yes. he he got he got he got the footage. He was there. What? So did I. Okay. And the doors were open initially, but Pelosi didn't send the National Guard. Okay. And she did not. And she even admits it. She even says it on on uh, on the news. That so she, you think Trump, who by all reports was sitting there watching it happen on no, TV and not doing anything no, for hours. Let me tell you something. He didn't tell people to go down there and ride. He just asked people to go peacefully. People went, the doors were open, but then they closed them. You don't think him right before saying, go to the Capitol, fight, no, no, is he instigating? Did he, he did see. too. He, he was there. I saw it. He said, go fight. Anyhow. He did. Is, That's a fact. He the did. The thing is, people, okay. You got to fight okay. like hell, he okay. said. Okay. Let me tell you something. He said, you got to fight like hell. What are you, you're a psychotherapist. What is that telling someone? Go fight like hell. Something. They burned flags at the Capitol uh, a few months ago. The Palestinians are doing an insurrection to all the colleges across the country. That's an insurrection. The ca Palestine people going to the colleges, breaking- Palestine people? Yes, the Palestinians that have been fighting outside the colleges the last- You mean a lot of them are Jewish people no, with-, no, with Whatever, whoever's been- Pro-Palestinian protesters. Pro-Palestinian protesters yeah. have been attacking colleges, Columbia University being a big one. What are they doing? Are they shooting bullets in the windows? No. So, you're saying an insurrection and they're attacking. They've been breaking in the windows. Yeah, they did that during the civil rights movement too. It happens. So they broke into Capitol windows. Same thing. Same difference. Well, one is protesting a genocide. The other one is trying to literally stop the results of an election. No. You, you support what they were doing on January 6th? No, because they did not. They're not being charged for the obstruction of justice because they didn't tamper with the evidence. 
Why were they there? Were they there to take they selfies or to stop to, to stop the certificate? No, no. They were there to stop the certification of the election. That's why they you were there. Know, the only way you stop it is if you tamper with evidence. And evidence wasn't tampered with. Read up on it. They're not getting charged for that. No, no. But I'm, I'm asking you, they were there. Trump told them we have to stop this. Matter. They were sort of... What do you mean it doesn't matter? Jordan, they were there because they were certifying the election results and they wanted to stop it. Were they not there to stop it? Yes or no? No. They did not stop it because they didn't tamper with evidence. If you read the case on Fisher, the uh, retired police officer that was part of that, and he, he uh, compared this with the Emron, some kind of Emron case in New York, and that charge is being dropped for all of them, that particular charge, because they didn't actually tamper with evidence. So tampering with evidence would mean that you are actually changing what's there. Walking in a building could be obstruction of justice, but when they did not tamper with evidence. So it's a couple different charges. You have to really look into them and understand okay, them. So let's put aside the legal terms, which you're saying they didn't technically tamper with evidence. Let's talk about the spirit of the protest, as you call it. They were not there just to demonstrate. Most of the people there were there for the purpose of making sure it, the election results that would have certified Biden as president no, were not. Well, that was there. Was that not their motivation? You were there protesting with what we call, quote unquote, a voice, having a voice in a protest. So it was a voice storming through gates, well, the, hit, hitting, hitting police. Why do they bring bats? Why do they bring weapons? Why do they bring that bear mace? Why do they bring guns? That was not all that. Now, but here's no, the no, thing. But he was, he was, he was my okay. cameraman there. Okay. He's, he saw a lot of them did have weapons. Okay. Guess what? That. We're not aware of the true intentions of that protest, though. Let me tell you something. Okay. But everything going on around the country the past four or five years since George Floyd, and I'm talking about the looting, the burning of statues, the burning of cities, the burning of buildings, the, the pre-Palestine Hamas thing that's been going on the last six months now, the people that burned, they went and burned the flag outside the Capitol. The world, I don't want to just focus on J6, but I think everything is really one big insurrection and chaotic right now in the United States. What do you mean by one big insurrection? The whole world is in an insurrection right now because we have wars. We're having wars. We're having, there's no peace. You think Trump is the one to bring I back don't peace? I think anybody is. I'm just talking. Okay. There is the world right now in the cities, going all the way back as far as George Floyd, where the cities were being burned, where the statues were being burned, all the statues were crushed, taken down. People were, are looting stores and the whole thing with the, the pro Hamas, all that, and the burning of the flag and the J6, all of it. Are, and the are they, he's been, wait, 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 one second. Can I just ask you respectfully? He's been covering the protests. Most of these protesters, they're not pro Hamas. They want the, they, wa they want, they want, they're, they're they want, they want, they away. want innocent Palestinians right. to stop being and killed. That's fine. But they're going to colleges and busting up colleges. And that's not right. They're taking away police they did power. that during the civil rights movement, too. I mean, that happens throughout American history. What's the difference? They did it at the civil rights, and they could do that at J6. What's your name again? End of conversation. I just wanted to get your name for the video. Anita. Anita, thank you, Anita. You're a good sport. And I'm right. You're right? OK. <laughs> You're right, because you're a woman. All right, well, that's one way of putting it. Uh, John, I got to take my hat off. Oh, my God. You remember, uh, John, when the times you've called me and said, I need a drink? I forgot how mentally damaging this line of work is. What have we been out here for an hour, an hour and a half? I already need, I want to retire. The complete cognitive dissonance on both sides. The idiots for Trump. The nice people, but still kind of dummies for Kamala. I heard a new word today, the Palestinians. I just, you know, I want to be fair. I want to talk to the people, really see where they're coming from, understand why they're supporting or not supporting. 
But the shit coming out of people's mouth is just one dark matrix of Steve Bannon and Sean Hannity and Tim Pool meets Rachel Maddow and NPR and TikTokers and all this bullshit. People don't know what the fuck they're talking about and it's damaging. It gives me brain damage. <sighs> but we march on and we fight on. Please, for the sake of my mental health, John behind the camera's mental health, uh, for our continued health, please, please support this on the ground reporting. Statuscoup.com slash join. Become a member for as low as five to $10 a month. I'm going to drink excessively now.